Good day learners. Today we will be discussing about optimum combination of resources and expansion path. After completion of this course, you will be able to understand what are isocost line, the equation and slope of isocost line, optimum input combinations, shifts in isocont line and expansion path. So let's begin this lecture. Now, before starting this concept, let's take into account a following scenario. We are talking about an entrepreneur who is working for the profit maximization and he will seek to maximize his profit by reducing the overall cost of production. For the same, he will take help of two different things. First one is isoquant map and second one is isocost line. We have discussed isoquant maps in the previous lectures. I'll just give you a recap of it. Isoquant map gives combination of two different factors of production yielding the same amount of output. So with the help of isoquant map, the producer will be able to identify different combinations of factors that will give him the desired amount of output. And secondly, he'll take help of isocost lines. We will discuss isocost line in detail in this particular section. Now, Isocont line, isocost line is a line that depicts different combinations of two factors of production that a given farm or a producer can buy utilizing the amount of money that they have. That is combination of two different factors of production that can be purchased utilizing a given amount of budget. For the sake of discussion, let's assume there is a producer who has rupees 300 and with the help of these rupees 300 he can hire labor at the rate of rupees 4 and capital at the rate of rupees 5 per hour. So if he is trying to utilize this given sum of money 300 rupees he have two extreme scenarios. In one extreme scenario he can have all the units of labor without any unit of capital and in the second scenario he can have all the units of capital without any assistance from labor. Now in these two extremes let's assume he's trying to uh, have maximum number of labors without utilizing any single unit of capital. So these rupees 300 will be utilized for hiring labors only. So the rate of labor is rupees 4. So the maximum units of labor that he can hire is 75. Now the another extreme is he is trying to rent as much capital as possible. He is trying to take the help of as much capital as possible without hiring any unit of labor. So in that case these rupees 300 will be utilized for hiring or for renting the capital only that is 60 units of capital. Now the 75 units of labor is the maximum unit of labor that he can attain and 60 units of capital is the maximum that he can attain. In both these scenarios the, the unit of another factor of production is zero. Now let's plot it in a graphical manner. On y axis we will take capital, on x axis we will take labor. The other maximum unit of capital is 75 the maximum unit of capital is 60 and the maximum unit of labor is 75. We'll join these two points and we'll get a line that is known as ISO cost line. So it is a line that is giving us different combinations of two different factors of production that can be purchased utilizing a given amount of budget. In this case, the budget is rupees 300. Now, let's move to the equation of isocost line and the graph of isocost line. For the same, let's take the total amount of budget is C. The units of labor is depicted by L. Capital is depicted by K. Wages that are paid to the labor is depicted by W. 
and interest paid for the capital is depicted by I. Now, the total amount of budget is C. Now, this C can be utilized for either purchase, purchasing labor, capital or combination of both. So, it is L into wages W plus K into I. So, this is the equation of isocost line. C is equal to LW plus KI. Now, let's look to the graph of it. Unit of capital on Y axis, unit of labor on L axis and this is your ISO cost line. Now, this ISO cost line will have the equation as C equals to number of labors into wages of labor plus number of capitals into payment made for the capital. Right. Now, <clears throat> at this point where the ISO cost line is touching Y axis, there is no unit of labor you can see that the labor is zero and at the point where this ISO cost line is touching X axis, the unit of capital is zero. So the coordinates of Y axis will be C equals to labor into wages plus capital into interest on Y axis. Since the unit of labor is zero, C is equal to 0 plus Ki. Thus, the unit of capital, that is K, will be C upon I. Same is the scenario of uh, X axis. At this point, the units of capital is 0. So, again, using the equation, C is equal to L into wages plus K into I where the unit of capital is zero, so C is equal to LW plus zero. So the units of labor is equal to C upon W. So on the basis of it, we have seen that the equation of ISO cost line is C is equal to number of labors, number of labors into wages plus number units of capital into interest and the coordinates on y axis are c upon i and the coordinates on x axis is c upon w slope of iso cost line the uh, the equation of iso cost line we will see different scenarios where we can see the shift of iso cost line now that shift of iso cost line can be because of increase in total cost let's take this scenario Let's assume the initial amount of budget was C and get, it get increased to C dash. Given the prices of factors of production remain same. So initially it was wages and interest and in the final scenario they are wages and interest. Now let's draw a graph of it. Units of capital are plotted in y axis and unit of labor is plotted on x axis. This is your initial ISO cost line with the equation of C is equal to labor into wages plus capital into interest. Now, since the total budget has increased, this ISO cost line will move outward and will be parallel to the initial ISO cost line. So, here the new equation will be C dash is equal to labor into wages plus capital into interest. This is your shift of isocount line because of your shift or your change in total cost. If the cost increases, the isocount cost line will move outwards and if the cost decreases, the iso cost line will move inward. Now, there is another scenario too. Let's assume the total budget is same, that is C, but the ISO cost line is shifting because of your change in prices of factors of production. So initially 
assume the total budget was C and the final budget is C. The wages that were paid to the labor was W and it get decreased to W dash where W dash is less than W and the capital remains or the interest of the capital is same. Now let's look how this graph will be plotted. The capital is plotted on x, y axis and the labor is plotted on x axis. Let's assume this is the initial ISO cost line where equation is C is equal to labor into wages plus interest into capital. Now since the wages are decreased from W to W dash that means if the producer is willing to attain only labors he can attain the more number of labors than that of the previous scenario. So the capital is supposed to remain same, the units of capital will be same, but the line will shift bit outwards and this will be the new line or new ISO cost line with the equation of L into W dash and capital into R. So we can see that if the units of Sorry, if the rate of labor is decreased and the payments that is made to the labor is decreased to W dash, the line will shift outward. If the payment made to the labor is increased, the line will shift inwards. And similarly will, will be the scenario of your Y axis where we can change the units of capital. We'll look to that graph in few minutes, in few seconds. Now let's see, the labor were getting wages and the wages are constant but the interest that was paid to the capital was changed to I dash where I dash is less than I. That is the rate of interest that is paid to the capital is decreased. Now X O Y capital is plotted on y axis and labor is plotted on x axis. This is the initial ISO cost line with the equation of C equals to labor into wages plus capital into interest. Now since the interest is reduced the producer will be able to attain higher units of capital so the line will shift upwards. This is the new ISO cost line with the equation of C into labor into wages c equals labor into wages plus capital into interest dash if the interest is increased the line will shift inward and if the interest is decreased the line will shift outwards so this is about the shifts in iso cost line now let's discuss about optimum input combination Optimum input combination is a situation or is a scenario where we use or we take the help of ISO quants and ISO cost line and try and identify the point where the producer is able to produce the given amount of output at the minimum cost. So for the same we will require two things. First one is ISO quants and second one is ISO cost lines. Now look to this scenario. Let's assume the producer is willing to produce 100 units of output. Now Now, for the same, he will try and identify a point where the cost of production is minimum. Let's say this is a ISO cost line. Now at point A and point B, this ISO quant line is touching this. Now let's discuss optimum input combination. Now see, 
optimum input combination is a point where the producer is able to produce a given amount of output at the minimum cost. That is, it is also known as least cost combination where a desired amount of output is produced at a point where the cost of production is minimum. That is, the payment that is made to the factors of production is minimum. Now, look. let's look to the scenario in a graphical manner. This is a graph where on n -axis, x axis there is labor and on y axis there is capital. Now, let's assume the producer is trying to produce 100 units of output. So with the help of this isopont, he will get different combinations of capital and labor that are helping him in getting that desired amount of output. Now, he will also try and identify the cost that is associated with purchase of these two factors of production. Now let's assume this is ISO cost line 1, IC1, ISO cost 1. Now it is intersecting with your ISO quant at point A and point B. Now at these two points, the producer can produce the desired amount of output that is 100 and he will utilize the given amount of budget. Now let's see another ISO cost line that is below your IC1. Let's name it as IC2. Now at this ISO cost line, there are combinations C and D at which the producer is able to produce the desired amount of output 100, but the cost of production is less. We have discussed it in the initial phases that the ISO cost line that is nearer to the origin has less cost of production as compared to the ISO cost line that is farther from the origin. Now, there is a point where your ISO cost line is tangent to your ISO quants. Now, let's assume this is point E. At this point, your ISO cost line is tangent to your ISO quant. That is, the producer is able to produce 100 units of output, but the cost of production at this ISO cost line IC3 is minimum. If we draw another ISO cost li line be below your IC3, let's name it as IC4, the producer is not able to produce 100 units of output. So the optimum point or the least cost combination point is a point where your ISO cost line is tangent to ISO quant. Let's discuss optimum input combination. Now, optimum input combination is a, is, is a, is a point where the producer is able to produce the desired amount of output at the minimum cost. Now, we have discussed it that the producer is working for profit maximization and for maximization of profit, the one of the ways is to reduce the cost of production. Now, let's look to this optimum input combination in a graphical manner. Let's assume this is a graph of x with x and y axis where on x, x axis we have capital and on y, uh, y axis we have capital and on x axis we have units of labor. Now let's say this is an ISO quant where the producer is willing to work and the producer wants to produce 100 units of output. Now he will try and identify the point where the cost of production is minimum. Let's assume he draws or he gets an ISO cost line naming IC1. Now this ISO cost line is tangent to this ISO quant at point A and at point B. That means these two are the points where the producer is able to produce 100 units of output at the given amount of budget that is denoted by IC1. Now let's draw another ISO cost line below IC1. Let's name it IC2. Now it is giving us point C and point D. 
Now these points C and point D are the points where your isoquant is intersecting with isocost line. That means the producer can have combinations at C and D at the desired amount of budget that is denoted by IC2 and he can produce 100 units of output. Now the cost of production in IC2 is less than your IC1 because at this point the ISO cost line is in the IC2 that is ISO cost line second one is inner to IC1. Now there is another ISO cost line IC3 which is tangent to isocon. Now let's name it at point E. Now at point E the producer will get the desired amount of output of 100 and he will be able to work at the least cost because IC3 is giving us the least combination or the minimum amount of cost that is now in IC3 we can see that the producer is able to produce the desired amount of output 100 and the cost of production is less than IC1 and IC2 because the IC3 uh, is much nearer to origin as compared to IC2 and IC1. If the producer thinks of moving to another ISO cost line hypothetically in IC4, no doubt the cost is less but he is not able to get the desired amount of output of 100. So point E is the point where the firm is able to produce a desired amount of output at the minimum cost. Now this is known as your optimum input combination. We must keep that in mind that the slope of isocont is equal to marginal rate of technical substitution. The slope of ISO cost line is equal to ratio of factor prices. Thus, at the point of optimum input combination, the marginal rate of technical substitution will be equal to ratio of factor prices. Now, moving further we'll discuss about expansion path. Now see, in long run, the producer tends to increase the amount of output that they are producing. That is, they will shift from one isoquant to another isoquant, thus increasing the amount of output that they are producing. Let's look. Let's assume initially they were produ producing 100 units, then they will produce 200 units, then they will produce 300 units. So what's happening is they are moving from one isoquant to another isoquant. So expansion path gives us combination of least cost, con uh, least cost points where the producer can increase its output by keeping the cost of production at each and every isocont at minimum level. We must keep that in mind that the prices of factors of production is kept as constant in this particular scenario. Right? Now, the assumptions of an expansion path are we take into account two factors of production, labor and capital. The units of labor and capital is taken as homogeneous. The prices of labor and capital will remain constant. And the last one is farm will is increase its total outlay to expand its output. Now on the basis of these assumptions, we will see a diagrammatic representation of an expansion path. Now if you look, this is the diagrammatic representation of an expansion path. Now, initially the firm is working at isoquant IQ1, then by increasing the output it moves to IQ2, then to IQ3, then to IQ4. Now, at each and every isoquant, we can see that there is, there is point E1 in isoquant 1, E2, E3, E4. 
E1, E2, E3 and E4 are least cost combination points or optimum combination points where the cost of production of desired amount of output is minimum. Now the producer will work in E1 when he is working in isoquant 1, at E2 when he is working in isoquant 2, E3 when he is working in isoquant 3 and E4 if he is working in uh, isoquant 4 because these are the points where the output is in the desired level but the cost of production is minimum. Now by joining these points E1, E2, E3 and E4 we will get a line that is known as expansion path. Now if you look we have discussed before that the slope of isoquant line is equal to ratio of factor prices wages upon interest the slope of isoquant line is equal to MPL upon MPK thus your MPL upon MPK will be equal to wages upon interest in all these points of expansion path. Now this is one of the simplest form of expansion path but there are different kinds of expansion path and we'll explore each and every one in bit detail. The first one is homogeneous expansion path. We have seen the example of homogeneous expansion path in the previous slide. If we get an expansion path that is a straight line and is moving forward is a homogeneous expansion path. Second one is your flatter expansion path. As we have discussed that MPL upon MPK is equal to wages upon interest. Now if the ratio of prices is increased the expansion path will become a flatter expansion path. If the ratio of prices is decreased the expansion path will become a steeper expansion path right and there is a scenario of non-homogeneous expansion path a non-homogeneous expansion path is the one which is not a straight line now look let's say initially this is the point where the least cost combination is now in this case this is the point where the least cost combination is and at this point this is the point where least cost combination is. Now this expansion path is your non-homogeneous expansion path. Now we will also try and understand the expansion path in case of short run. Now let's assume This is units of capital and this is units of labor. This is a normal expansion path. Now if the firm is running on a short run we will assume that we can change one factor of production. Let's say we are changing one factor of production keeping other factors of production as constant. Now this is the point where the firm is working in the initial phases. Now since the another factor of production is kept as constant the form will work or the expansion path will be a straight line parallel to x axis and it will work at different points that won't be the optimum points or optimum combination points. This is all about your this lecture. Thank you.